soak in that, that atmosphere of worship. I also, I also salute every, every worshiper, worshiper every man, man, woman, woman of God, God who has, who has come, come to grace this prophetic, prophetic worship, worship encounter. encounter. The Lord, the Lord will do you good in Jesus', Jesus name. name. I want, I to, want share to share a few things, things and I, want I wanted to lend me your attention just, just to, to um, add, add to your, your worship, worship moments. moments. Can you imagine, imagine that you've spent hours, hours already, already stretching, stretching your heart, heart and enjoying, enjoying worship worship God's, God's presence? presence. Allow, allow me to read a scripture, scripture that just, that just came, came to my mind. mind. <coughs> two, two scriptures, two scriptures actually. actually. The first, the first choice, choice Acts, Acts chapter, chapter 17. 17. Acts, Acts chapter, chapter 17. 17. Um, um, so this, so is, this is Paul, Paul in, in Athens. Athens. Paul, Paul went, went to Athens, Athens and as and he, as he passed, passed by, by, he saw, he saw the, people the people they were they devout, devout people, they were worshippers. worshippers. They seem to love a deity, deity, but then he saw a very, very interesting description and it and caught, caught his attention. attention. Follow me as I read Acts chapter 17 and verse 22. Then stood Paul in the midst of Mars Hill and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things ye are too superstitious. He said, For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar, listen now, with this inscription to the unknown God, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship, him declare I unto you. Powerful. So here is, here is, um, here is Paul looking at the people who probably, I don't know in what manner or in what form they worshipped. In ancient times, they worshipped through sacrifices, they worshipped through chanting sounds to a deity, and so on and so forth. But then, the fact that these people were devoted, supposedly, but there was one problem with their worship. It was not the activity. It was not even the insincerity in their heart. But the Bible records here that Paul addressed them because on the inscription they wrote to an unknown God. Very profound. There are many people today, some of them gathered among the thousands of people gathered right now listening to me. They sing to an unknown God. They give to an unknown God. They cry to an unknown God. They shout to an unknown God. They are gathered tonight for many to an unknown God. My assignment is to help guide you to introduce this God that you have come to worship tonight. You call it ancient worship. But there is one who is called the ancient of days. And until you understand the ancient of days, there can be value to any worship. Now, most times when people have gatherings like this, some come because of the religiosity, some come to while away time, some come because they hope that celebrities are going to be converged together or some preacher that they love listening to. And these are wonderful reasons, you know. Uh, but I believe that God put this program in the heart of the woman of God, not just to sing. If all you do is to sing, it did not profit us much. If all we do is to shout, then it did not profit us much. If all we do is to give, then it did not profit us much. The real profit of this ancient worship will be that in the midst of the worship, Christ, God, is introduced or reintroduced to someone. Paul said, you guys are zealous, powerful. You're doing everything right. Lying on the floor, perhaps. Jumping, perhaps. Lacerating yourself like the prophets of Baal. But he said, the one problem is that you are worshipping an unknown God. Sincerely, I will tell you, there are many people whose worship experience does not carry the power and the potency that true worship should carry. The reason is because the focus is on the activity and not the object of the worship. The object of the worship is not a keyboard. The object of the worship is not a good voice, as wonderful as that is. The object of the worship is not the dressing, not the men and the women. 
there is only one person who deserves that worship jesus christ himself and so all the artists who have traveled from around this nation who are there the worship ministers um choma jesus herself and the team of the wonderful men and women of god perhaps fathers of faith within the land and around the region they are all gathered to worship this one king jesus your worship only becomes potent if you know him if you love him and if you serve him let me repeat that again your worship only becomes potent if you know him if you love him and if you serve him perhaps i want us to repeat it together again that my worship go ahead say that my worship only becomes potent if i know him number one if i love him number two and if i serve him let's try it one last time my worship only becomes potent if i know him if i love him and if i serve him these are three important components in working with god you must know him john chapter 17 and verse 3 jesus was speaking and he said this is life eternal that they may know thee the only true god and jesus whom thou hast sent so if you know him then you can love him you cannot love a person you do not know so the first journey to becoming a true worshiper is not to have a song to sing the first journey to becoming a true worshiper is not knowing an instrument that you can play effectively as wonderful as that is the first step in becoming a true worshiper it's not even having a good voice being vocally powerful or converging in a prophetic worship program like this these things are all important but that they find their value first when you know him there are probably many people gathered tonight who have been around church around worship around worshipers around songs around instruments but they have never truly known the lord so you must know him second there are those who have had some levels of encounter but they began to love the lord until god started bringing liftings god started bringing increases of all kinds god started opening doors and their love began to fade remember in revelations one of the churches he said that you are neither hot nor cold. He says to return to your first love. So there are people here who know him in a measure, but God is calling you to move beyond just knowledge, to love him, to love him. And the proof that you love Jesus, the proof that you love God, is that you place value on him above everything. Value above ministry, value above money, value above anointing value above religiosity value even above church i love jesus with all my heart there is absolutely nothing that comes close to my relationship with him this is very important for you to know you see that he says um simon but jonah john chapter 21 jesus was speaking and he says simon but jonah lovest thou me not knowest thou me Peter had known him for three and a half years, but now he's saying, let's move past the realm of just knowing. Lovest thou me more than this. Don't just sing, I love you, Jesus. Don't just say, I love you, Jesus. Do you truly love me? And if you do, what have you given up for me? Lovest thou me more than this. So there are a category of people tonight, your first pursuit in becoming a true worshiper is to know him. The second category of people God is calling you to love him, to love him sincerely. And then the final category of people that God is calling are those who God wants to serve him. Because he told Peter in John 21 again, when you read from verse 16 downwards, he says, lovest thou me, uh, Peter, Simon Peter. And he says, yeah, Lord. And he said, feed my sheep. Then later on, he said, feed my lamb. 
So if it is true that you know me, you prove that you know me by loving me. And if it is true that you love me, you prove that you love me by serving him. What does it mean to serve Jesus? To use everything, everything that you have. Your beauty, your talent, your resources, your voice like many are using right now, your ability, everything to reveal him to the nations. That's what it means to serve Jesus. To serve Jesus is beyond being a preacher. To serve Jesus is beyond being a man or a woman of God as we call it. The one who serves Jesus is one who is about spending his days, spending your all to see that he's revealed, like I would say, and he's glorified. There are three models of worship that I have learned in the Bible. And I want you to listen very carefully, please. Three models of worship that God himself showed me that has helped me today to be able to worship God truly. The first is the man Job. There is a model of worship that comes out of the life of Job. Job was a man who was great. The Bible called him the greatest in the East and the then world. And one time tragedy struck and Job lost literally everything. Can you imagine that? That in one moment you lose cattle, you lose estate, you lose children, sons and daughters, you lose servants, you lose your influence, everything went down. But the Bible says something profound about Job. That when they brought all these reports to Job, the Bible says he bowed himself and worshipped. That is the first model of worship. Worship in the midst of pain is true worship. That for some of you who are standing right now, you've lost things. You've lost opportunities, probably lost relationships. Some of you are standing right now with wounds and sicknesses and all kinds of things. The Bible says Job bowed down, not and complained, not and cursed God. He bowed down and worshipped. Second model of worship. Jesus comes into a room and here comes this wonderful woman holding an alabaster box. The Bible calls her Mary in one of the synoptic accounts. And this woman had been a harlot. She lived a very dirty life, you know, known by all to be a prostitute. And then the Bible tells us that this woman comes before Jesus and does some very profound things. Number one is that she kneels before him and then she breaks her alabaster box. The Bible tells us the worth of the wages that made up that box was a year's wages. Pure spikenard. They, they were spices, you know, and, and, and beautiful scents that they had. She broke everything at his feet, crying before him. Then the Bible says she used her hair. There are many women gathered there listening to me. You know what it means? I mean, women invest beautifully to make their hair, um, you know, at, at its best. They invest money. They invest all kinds of things. Here is a woman now who used her hair to clean his feet to the point that some of the disciples were offended. They called it a waste. They didn't call it worship. They called it a waste because it provoked them. How do you spend this much money, carry your glory, your tears? But this was a woman who had come from a terrible past. Probably when people saw her walking to Jesus, they said, what is this woman coming to do here? You don't belong here because of your yesterday. And her response that was that she worshipped. And the beautiful thing about her worship, as I would always point, is that everything in her worshipped. Her tears worshipped. Her hair, her glory worshipped. Her wealth worshipped. So in addition to Job, Job tells us the attitude to worship. But this woman tells us the vastness of worship. That you can worship God with your tears. You can worship God with your wealth. You can worship God with everything that represents glory to you. She knelt down and poured everything. And Jesus said, everywhere this story is, this woman's issue will not be forgotten. Because she came as a true worshiper. The woman never sang any song that we know. Job never sang any song that we know. But these people were accredited based on scripture to be true worshippers. The third and final model of worship, I believe there are a lot more, but just these three to um, 
spice up what I'm teaching you and to bring you to that point where you become a true worshiper indeed. The Bible talks about John being caught up in the Isle of Patmos, Revelation chapter 4, Revelation chapter 5. And he is given the opportunity to watch the worship in heaven. And then he says that when there was a call, who is worthy to open the book, unlock the scroll, he saw the lamb as though he had been slain, having seven horns, seven eyes, and after the four and twenty elders, you know, I uh, mean the four living creatures called holy, 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 and then he makes a profound statement. He says the four and twenty elders, the twenty-four elders now, they cast their golden crown, and the Bible says they worshipped he that sat on the throne and to the lamb profound you know that to be an elder is a product of experience accomplishment results and yet the bible says in the presence of his majesty they cast their golden crowns the woman with the alabaster box did not have a crown she had her pain she had everything she still brought it before him but these guys were accomplished people at least we know that one thing about elders according to hebrews 11 is that they obtain promises he says for by it the elders obtain a good report so by whatever parameter we know that it's not easy to be an elder and now these are elders with crowns a crown is a symbol of your achievement many of you following right now many of you who are listening to me gathered there and the many more who will be connecting perhaps by way of internet um we don't downplay the fact that you have experienced god in a measure probably you're a man or woman of god doing well in ministry wonderful perhaps you're a worshiper you know and in songs you are you're a worship minister perhaps you are someone who is accomplished in business the lord is calling you that even in that state you can cast your golden crown tonight and worship so whether you are job experiencing pain you lost a child you lost your spouse you lost your job you lost your relevance you're going through some terrible season and you know the thing about life is sometimes these seasons can come upon us so much you can be so destabilized you i can only imagine the trauma that job had to go through the response for you tonight is to worship you lost land you lost a house maybe you're a graduate you've never had the opportunity to work you're trusting god you are a husband you can't take care of your wife the bills are there the economy is boiling all kinds of things are happening rather than complaining and shouting i recommend for you the worship model of job he cast himself in the midst of that pain and worshiped or perhaps you are coming from a background where you don't even want anybody to know about your life because from a human standpoint it's a total mess even coming around this gathering you feel filthy you feel bad you feel like there's there's nothing that can anything good come out of your life i want you to to know that um like that woman you can experience god anew while it's time to worship as you step into the next sessions of worship let your tears worship let your glory worship let your body worship let your all be plunged into that atmosphere of worship and then for those who have accomplished so much perhaps you just came to grace the occasion you just came to lend your voice and your support even at that height even at that altitude in life and destiny and in the spirit there is still room to worship no man becomes too big to worship not the king when he comes as king we take off our crowns there cannot be many kings in the presence of worship there can be many worshipers but they bow to that one king so it's important for you to have this as you begin to worship god is calling us to know him calling us to love him calling us to serve him he does not want you to worship an unknown God tonight. He wants you to worship a known God. John chapter 17 and verse 3. This is life eternal, that they may know thee the only through God and Jesus whom thou hast sent. The Bible says, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. Let not the mighty man glory in his might. But he says, let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me. I'm going to be praying right now three prayers 
Number one, our leaders just give us a minute to pray and I want us to cry before the Lord and make sure you participate in the prayer, everybody. I want you to pray and begin to talk to the Lord. Pour out your heart before your maker. Pour out your heart before your king. For many of you, you are going to be saying, I do not know you like Paul when he was Saul, when the light knocked him down and he said, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? He said, who are you, Lord? You see that now? So many of you are going to cry and say, Lord, reveal yourself to me. I'm tired of singing to an unknown God. I'm tired of giving to an unknown God. Go ahead and pray. I am tired of serving in church, a church that belongs to an unknown God. And even as pastors, as men of God, you can pray. I'm tired of preaching about an unknown God. I'm tired of leading people to an unknown God. I'm tired of serving in a church, a church that belongs to an unknown God. I'd like you to pray and cry for a revelation. Cry for a revelation. Lord, I desire to know you that in this, in this atmosphere of worship, do something to my heart. Let there be that circumcision. I want to know you. I truly want to know you. I truly want to know you. As a worshiper, pray. A man of God, pray. A businessman, pray. One who has come to grace this prophetic worship, pray. I want to know you. Are you praying? Go ahead and talk to the Lord. Cry from the depth of your heart. I do not want to worship an unknown God. Ask him to plant a dimension of love for him in you. That you will love him more than anything. One of the greatest assets in my life today is my love for God. Not anointing, not preaching, not any of these things. I will throw them a thousand times to maintain my love for Jesus. And I mean what I'm saying. I want you to pray. Let it be from the depth of your heart. I desire to love you. To love you more than money. To love you more than ministry. To love you more than the religiosity of church. I'm tired of playing church games. I want to love you sincerely. Go ahead and pray. Ask him to plant that love within your spirit, man. And then, of course, this is for all of us now. I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, I desire to serve you all the days of my life beautiful prayer i desire to serve you go ahead and pray some of you you have come here in your life i'm going to be praying for you shortly the call of god is upon your life and now is the opportunity for you to lay down everything and to love him to take up that call to say i'm not fighting this call again i know the call of god is upon my life i will not fail destiny my heart is open to receive that mandate and i will run with it all the days of my life life there are business people who need to serve god beyond doing business there are preachers who need to serve god beyond preaching everybody has a role to play it says lo i come in the volume of the book as it is written of me to do your will in jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 5 he says whilst thou was in your mother's womb before thou camest forth he says i called you and i ordained you to be a prophet to the nations so everybody has an ordination in christ i like you to pray and say lord reveal to me the role that i have to play in your end time prophetic agenda make sure you pray this prayer from the depth of your heart reveal to me the role that i have to play i don't want to be moving around i don't want to just share the grace after this powerful prophetic program enjoy the ministry of worshipers and then leave and go back and live a wasted and a useless life you're going to pray and say lord reveal to me there is a role that i have to play in your prophetic program and i'm ready to take up that call right now make sure that he's hearing you pray make sure that he's hearing you pray now i want to pray for you i want to pray for you and i want you to stretch your hands towards your screens your television whatever it is and i want you to believe there are two prayers right now i want to pray i'm going to pray and ask in fact let me do an altar call before i pray an altar call is very important. What is an altar call? A call to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. 
it is very important very very important you are standing sitting around that entire ground and you know you are saying apostle i know that i have never truly genuinely made jesus lord of my life i may have been around church perhaps even born by parents that are clergy that's not what i'm asking you i'm not asking you if you are a worker in church i'm not even asking you if you have a christian name i'm talking about a functional relationship with this jesus you need to move past the realm of knowing or worshiping an unknown god to god and a savior that you know the first revelation of God that he wants people to have about him is a savior. For God so loved the world that he gave them his one and only begotten son that whosoever, this blessing is for whosoever. Peter was speaking in the day of Pentecost and he says, for this promise is unto you and to your children, your children's children, as many as are far off, even those that the Lord will call. So you are saying, Apostle, if you will give me an opportunity, I want to come to Jesus. I want you to lift your right hand high, in fact, as high as you can. I'm sure that um, if there is room for you to come forward, then you can step forward. If there is no room to step forward, then you can lift your hands where you are. Please let me ask counselors or uh, some persons at this time to guide the people while I'm praying this prayer. It's a very important aspect of what I'm doing right now. And you are saying, Apostle, I want to make Jesus Lord of my life genuinely. Or you are saying, I remember getting saved one time, but as it is now, I've deviated from the things of God. I cannot say that I'm walking in the ways of God and I want to renew my commitment. I want you to come out. If there's space, please let them come out. I know there are so many people, thousands of people, but there is always room at the cross. If they are able to come out, that is fine. If for any reason they are unable to come out, please counselors do well to identify them so that um, I don't know if cards will be given to you or you will just um, be counseled. But if there are cards that will be given to you, salvation cards, then please receive them, fill them legibly, and then you submit it to the people. Now, there are many models when we call people out. Sometimes they're uh, they move after the prayer to where the counselors will meet with them. If there is such provision, then after I pray with you, please follow as you are directed so that um, you will be guided appropriately. But if there is no provision for that, then when I'm done praying, you may return to your seat. And whenever a call is made for those who um, handed their lives over to Jesus, make sure that you are available, make yourself available so that we can follow up with you. But I want to pray with you now. I want you to say this. Please lift your hands high above your head and say this after me. All those who are making this commitment, say, Lord Jesus. Go ahead, say it as loud as you can. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word. I love you with all my heart. I confess that I cannot help myself. But I believe that you died for my sin. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Right now, I receive Jesus into my heart as my Savior, my Lord, and my King. I declare, say it, that the power of sin, of Satan, of hell, and of the grave is broken over my life. From tonight, I am a child of God. I go forward ever and backward never. In Jesus' name. I decree and declare that the power to live the victorious Christian life based on the authority of scripture is imparted over your life this moment and that in the name of jesus you will only go from grace to grace from glory to glory in the mighty name of jesus so please be directed appropriately whether to a separate session where counselors will um, attend to you or back to your seat now everybody um let me pray this is my final um, assignment and then I release you into the next sessions of your worship we're going to pray for the sick and then I just speak the blessing of the Lord upon your life so if you are sick in your body 
here is your opportunity to be healed i want you to lay your hands right now if it's your head lay your hands on your head do it by faith do it by faith if it's a part of your body you cannot touch just make contact with your chest i believe in the jesus that heals i believe in the power of god the bible says while he taught the word the power of god was present to heal go ahead i want to pray for you there are people who brought sick people whether blind whether lame crippled it doesn't matter you just lay your hands as a point of contact and let me quickly pray for you father in the name of jesus you give us the power against unclean spirits i stretch my hands from here to your precious people and i declare that every spirit that is back of the infirmities the spirit that is back of the bodily calamities that have befallen your people in the name of jesus we curse that spirit right now and i declare that that spirit is dismissed from your body now i declare be healed in the name of jesus shout a believing amen be healed in the mighty name of jesus christ from the crown of your head down to the soles of your feet i speak healing i speak life in the name of jesus i speak life and i command every failing organ or failed organ in your body to be revitalized right now in the name of jesus i declare healing for deaf ears in the name of jesus I declare healing for blindness of any and all sorts in the name of Jesus. Migraine headaches be healed. Bone conditions be healed. Those who cannot walk, maybe you came on a wheelchair or you came on a crutch. In the name of Jesus, I want you to take a step of faith, lift that crutch or whatever it is and begin to walk by the Spirit of God. Those who brought deaf people, I command, begin to hear eyes begin to see failed organs in the name of jesus christ let there be a supernatural ministration of god's power to your body every blood disease i cause it right now hiv i cause it cancer i cause it sugar diabetes i cause it in the name of jesus all kinds of bone problems fertility problems in the name of jesus i speak to you go and return with your miracle children by the power of the holy spirit now whether i mention your case or not any situation whatsoever that has plagued your body i stretch my hands from here and i declare be healed now be healed this moment in the mighty and matchless name of jesus be healed in the powerful name of jesus christ now you check yourself do what you couldn't do before and now i speak over your life in the name of jesus every door that has been closed over your destiny i command that door to be open now i speak to that door as you worship may that door be open may that door be open doors of finances doors of marital settlement doors of children doors of jobs doors of ministries i prophesy over you those doors are open right now i speak to you that these egyptians you see today every trouble that you came there with whilst you spend your time and your life worshiping the king may the king arise for you and every